Hey everyone, it's Daniel from VoiceFlow. In these tutorials, we're going to go into some of the more advanced concepts in VoiceFlow to help you take your bot from maybe a simple linear flow to something that's a bit more complex, non-linear, and can really adapt with the user. So in this specific tutorial, we're going to focus on information capture and variables and logic. So capturing information in your project, manipulating it, and then using variables and logic to route users down different paths. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and build a really simple kind of banking assistant. So the first block we're going to have is welcome to voice flow. And then we are going to use our button step um, to add a little flow here. So let's go ahead and create a send money flow. So now a user has the option when they start voice flow to go ahead and send money. Um, so they can say send money and it will take them down this path. So we're going to go ahead and build this out. So if we're going to send money to someone, we actually know, like, we want to know who they're going to send it to. So who do you want to send money to? Now, this is where we want to capture some information. So I'm going to, for the example, I'm going to pick a name. So I want the user to be able to send money to a name. So if they say John, we're going to say, cool, let's send money to John. So we can do this in two ways. We can use the capture step to capture the entire user apply and save it in a variable. Um, that's the kind of easiest thing to think about. So if the user says, you know, John, it'll capture John in the last utterance variable. But if we want to get a bit more complex and we want to do something like, you know, if someone says, I want to send money to John, finding a way to just capture John and not the whole string. This is where we're going to use entities. So within the capture step, you can choose to save the entire user apply to any set of variables in your project. You can also use an entity. So an entity is that specific name or that specific item that you're looking to capture within a sentence. So if I hit create new entity here, I'm going to call it name. And within here, I can have a couple different types. So if it's custom, I'm going to define the data that represents this entity. So I might start adding in names like John, Daniel, um, Cara, um, Alicia, Selena, etc. So I might add a whole bunch of different names here. And when I create this entity, if I say any of these names or anything similar to these, it'll be able to recognize it. Because names are super common, we actually have some built-in ones. So we've got name, uh, geography, email, phone number, percentage number, all built in. So I'm gonna go ahead and just choose name. It's already pre-built with a bunch of names, but you can also add names to it if you want. And so let's go ahead and hit create entity. Great, so now that I've created this, um, you can see that the capture step looks a bit different. So now what it's doing is it's saving the name to a variable that it's going to create called name. So whenever I create a variable, an entity, a variable is created as well. Entities and variables are kind of like the same thing, with the exception that an entity is actually filled from a user typing something in, and a variable is kind of filled manually, right? So you're either saving the full string there, or you are um, taking it from an API call, or using a set step. So variables are kind of just dumb, they're just shells to put things into. Entity is um, able to actually pick out a specific item from a sentence. So now that I've got this in here, I want to make sure I can define what happens if someone doesn't say a name. So if it's a no match, uh, we're going to use a no match and say something like, please uh, enter a name. And the no match is very powerful in voice flow. Um, the way that it works is if I don't, if the, if I say something and it's not matched either at the step or somewhere in the project, it's going to hit the no match. And what it'll do is it, it's an escalating no match. So it'll do the first one here. I can add a second one. So if someone does it the second time, it'll say the second one. I can add a third one. And then what I can also do is I can add a path as well. So let's say a user doesn't say a name the first time. I'm going to say, please enter a name. If they do it again a second time, I might take them down a different path. This is very valuable if you want to route users to an agent um, or maybe take them down a different kind of default path if they're not actually uh, being able to use your flow. So we're just going to go ahead and just stick with the reprompt no match. So now in here, we're going to go ahead and just make a new talk step and just say, great. Let's send money to, and we're going to say name. Awesome. Now we've got a pretty simple flow here. Who do you want to send money to? I'm going to say like my name, I want to send money to Daniel. It's going to pick out Daniel, save it and say, let's send money to Daniel. So now I want to go and actually train my model. Whenever you create an entity or add an intent or add anything with like training data in it, you want to go ahead and train the natural language model that voice has baked into it. So it's done training, let's run a test. So I'm gonna say send money, and I'm gonna say I want to send money to Daniel. And you can see here that it's able to actually pick out Daniel from this sentence 
and it saved it into the name variable and it shows up here in my project. A helpful thing if you're working with variables and entities is when you're running a prototype, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see a little knob over here. If you pull that out, it'll show you the value of all the variables in your project as you're actually testing it out. So you can see what's matching or not matching. So great, that example's done. So let's move on to a more complex example now. So let's say that um, I wanted to actually do this all in one step. So rather than um, you know go through this whole thing of saying, who do you want to send money to? I want to just be able to automatically detect if a user actually said a name or not. So to do this, let's change up my project a bit. So I'm going to just delete this part here. I'm also going to delete this button and I'm going to create uh, an intent. And well, you know what, let's actually do this on the button. So within the button step, you can have a button title and you can attach an intent. So a button title just shows the button. So here we've got a button. But if I, if I type something, if I said like, I want to send money to Daniel, nothing's going to happen. The, the project is going to end because there's nothing in the step that recognizes me typing something. So to do that, I want to add an intent to this button. So let's go ahead and say attach intent and we're going to create a new intent and we're going to call this intent name send money. Send money. Now we're going to add in some sample utterances. So utterances are things that a user might say to indicate they want to do this. So I might say something like, I want to send money. I want to send money to Daniel or name. Um, and let's go ahead and just generate some utterances like that. So this will save you a bunch of time. You can see I've got some here. Let's maybe add utterances to these or entities to these. So I want to transfer money to Daniel. Uh, I want to wire money to Daniel. Oops. Uh, I need to, let's make one more or let's generate some more and see if it comes up with entities. Great. This time you can see it's, it's generated a bunch with entities, which is what I wanted. Awesome. Let's hit create intent. And now we've got a send money intent. So now what we can do is um, if a user actually types it out, we can go ahead and do that. So let's send money to name. We're going to head. I need to retrain my project now because I added a new intent. So there's more information for it to be trained on. And once that's done, we can see that we don't just have to press the button. We can actually just type out what we want to do. Great. So I'm at my button step here. And rather than pushing the button, I'm going to say, I want to send money to Daniel. Awesome. So you can see that it recognized it. It took you down this path and it actually saved the name Daniel. When we're working with intents, what you want to make sure you do is turn on debug and intent confidence score, because this is going to show you what's going on behind the scenes. So you can see that I said, I want to send money to Daniel. It was able to recognize that I was trying to trigger the send money intent and it matched with 100% because that's like one of my utterances I put in. If I put in something more like less similar to exactly, this might be 80, 90%. Um, this basically matches anything above 30%. If it's below 30%, it's going to hit the no match. So now I've got a bit of a flow here, but I'm in a bit of a dilemma. So what if a user actually just clicks send money? Um, this is going to be blank. And so maybe I want to add in some logic here. And this is all, again, all on you, depending on how you want to actually design this flow. But let's add some logic and let's say was a name mentioned. So I'm going to say uh, name specified and then we'll add uh, just we'll, we'll say the no match path is going to be something else. Right. So that means the name wasn't specified. So let's cut this up. Uh, and maybe we have a different flow here that says, who do you want to send money to? Who do you want to send money to? Great. And so within here now, I'm actually going to go in and, and add some real values to this, this logic to make sure it actually works. So if I need to specify a condition, so if variable name is anything, so if it has any value other than zero, we're going to go down the first path. If it doesn't, it'll just take the else path. So now if I do this and I say, um, you know, I want to send money to Daniel. You can see that it's able to, uh, in the in the background here, because I've got those settings turned on, I can see that it matched the send money intent, it hit the condition step, it can it matched the condition and it took step one, uh, and then it led me down this path. If, for example, I ran another test and instead of actually doing that, I just clicked the button, I didn't provide a name. So you can see that it didn't match any condition, so it took the else path and it took me down this path here. 
So that's how you can start to actually use uh, variables within your project. There's a third thing you can do to actually speed this up even more. So let's say I didn't want buttons, uh, but instead I'm going to let a user, I'm going to create a like top level intent. So I'm going to make a whole new topic in here and I'm going to call this topic send money. And I'm doing this because I expect my project to be like massive, right? Um, so I'm going to organize it in an effective way. For intent here, I want the intent trigger to be send money. So you can see that all my intents are actually saved. And so the difference here is that now I'm creating what we call an open intent. So that's an intent from this event step here. This is always listening. And so if I have um, some options here, so let's say some buttons, and it's something like um, check balance and maybe uh, like uh, spending history, um, a user can still access send money uh, by just saying send money and it'll actually jump them to this flow. And so in this flow now, I want to go ahead and send money to someone. So let's say, cool, let's send money to name. Awesome. But now instead of like having to do a whole logic check of checking if they send money, etc., I can actually make this a required entity right in the intent step itself. So in required entities, I want to click it and I need to actually create a no match response. So entity reprompt is going to be, please say a name, the name of who you want to send money to. Great. So now you can see here that I've got a required entity in this intent. And so if I trigger this intent and I don't see the entity, it's going to prompt me with the prompt I just gave it to actually say the name and it won't move on until I do that. So if I'm here, let's just make some additional paths here. So we have a full assistant. Checking balance. Say checking spending history. Great. So let's go ahead and run this. Do I need to train it? Looks like I do. So let's just go ahead and train. I think it's whenever you add a required entity, it requires training as well or any reprompts. So let's wait for that to train. But you'll see that um, I kind of have a bit of this escalation going at the same time now. So let's run test. Great, I'm at this, so I can click one of these buttons or I can actually trigger an intent. So if I say, uh, I want to send money, you'll see that it actually hits me with that entity reprompt. So please say the name of who you want to send money to. I'm gonna say Daniel. And now that I've done that, it's completed this um, requirement, it's jumped to this intent and it's proceeded down the path. So cool, let's send money to Daniel. So those are different ways that you can kind of use intents and entities to start your project. Um, what I'd recommend is, is really designing your flow to be a bit dynamic. So you can use buttons here to recommend that a user goes down a certain path. So for example, if I do a button um, that is go to intent, so let's say, um, you know, send money and I can, uh, I can actually take a user to that intent that I just created as well. So rather than building a path, I can just say action, go to intent and I'll tell it to go to the send money intent. So sorry, in the send money topic, go to send money intent. Great. And so this will work the same way. Um, and so if a, now what if a user clicks the send money button, it'll actually jump them to the send money intent. But because I don't have a name, it's gonna ask me who I wanna send money to. I'm gonna say Daniel, and then it'll jump me there. So that's how you can start to create a, a, a kind of more robust assistant. And the last thing I'll talk about is just the escalating path. So you mentioned, you saw here that when I hit this button step, even if I said the utterance directly, like VoiceLow would jump me to the intent. So VoiceLow has an escalating system. I think I mentioned this before, but the first thing it does is it checks um, what's happening here on the local step. So if I said send money, it doesn't see any like send money intent on this button. So I could have added it, you know, uh, attaching intent here, but I didn't. And so the next thing it's gonna do after that is it's gonna look at global. So it's gonna look local first, then it's gonna look global for an intent. I have an intent here that says send money, so it would jump me there. If I didn't have an intent that says send money, the third thing it would do is look for a local no match. So if I created a no match like this, no match, I didn't get that. It would hit this no match or it would just take me down a path. And then finally, if it's if there's no local no match, then it's gonna go for the global no match. So I'm just gonna write that out here. So first is um, local intent. Second is global intent. Third is local no match. Fourth is global no match. 
And that's how voice flow kind of like escalates through your project. And so if you have topics and intents for your project, no matter where a user is, they can jump to those if they want. So it allows you to create a very dynamic and fluid flow and conversation. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, I hope this made sense. You can always, again, if you're stuck, just ask our bot here. So I can say like, what is an intent? And it's gonna be able to look through our, all of our documentation and actually recommend articles and videos for you to watch. So always there if you need it or if you get confused, you can always hop in our Discord and ask us there, or worst case scenario, you can go ahead and actually submit a support ticket through our VS Assistant as well by just clicking Ask Our Team. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next video, we're gonna dive into organization and a couple other topics, uh, but I hope this helps.